EA Games. Challenge everything. Watch out for more. What is it? The Sims product as a whole and the franchise is really about player creativity. As I said, the, the ability for the player to tell a story and to create the environment that that story exists within. I think Sims 2 is just going to be spectacular. I think it's, it's the, the, the ground floor of a whole new adventure. It is so much more engaging and immersive because we've been able to increase the, um, the scene, the setting, the environment, as well as the Sims themselves. It feels much more like you're in the room with these people. Um, as opposed to watching them from a high balcony like you did with The Sims 1. The Sims are turning from kind of two-dimensional cartoon figures into uh, surprisingly real uh, virtual people. Where we've been spending most of our time and in investing our effort is to really make them come alive. For the first time, you actually get to follow your Sims through their lifetime. Toddlers, they become kids. Kids become teenagers. Teenagers become adults. The grandparents and the parents and the grandchildren. And that you have this interconnected family tree, and you can see those relationships play themselves out on the screen. They get pregnant. They get buff. They get overweight. They are more interesting to play with, more interesting to, to nurture and, and experiment with. Um, the houses are dramatically more interesting, the environment is in 3D, it's more visceral, uh, the neighborhood is bigger, you can have thousands of lots in there. Uh, I don't want to say, oh, it's in 3D and that's why it's better, but it's amazing how much more connected players are going to feel to that world because you can zoom in and out of it and rotate around it and it's, it never disappears from the screen. You've always got that house that you've created and the characters that you've created and you can look at them at any angle. The Sims have huge egos because uh, um, they know that there's millions of people watching everything they do. Mokey hokey. <laughs> It's
it's a wide open universe. We're, we're trying to make it really, really so much better and not lose the spirit of where it came from. Uh, we love this franchise. We want this franchise to go on and on and on. And we want everybody to keep loving it and keep having a great time and living their fantasies. And you will have to experience it. I can make more mischief in The Sims 2 than I can make in real life, I think. But I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe it's a worthy, ongoing experiment. EA Games. Challenge everything. Hi, I'm Tim Letourneau. I'm the senior producer of Sims 2, and I really want to show you the game today. What I'm going to do first is show you a movie I made using the new Sims 2 movie-making feature. Meet My Sim Don. Well, that gives you an idea of how I've been playing Don across his lifetime. And that's the amazing new key feature in Sims 2 is that you play the Sims across a lifetime. And as a player, you're invested in fulfilling their lifelong dreams. What I want to do now is take you into the Baxter house. Some time has passed. Don and Sarah actually have a little boy now, Alex. And today is his birthday. Our new 3D engine allows all of this to come to life in vivid detail. Let's go check it out. This is the Baxter home that I built for him, and I'm going to kind of zoom in on Don here. And as you saw in the video, Don's kind of an amorous guy. Well, one of the things that's new to the gameplay in Sims 2 is that you play the Sims across a lifetime, and during that time, you're trying to fulfill their dreams. Don is a romance Sim, so he's actually trying to... Um, he has wants that are related to romance. He wants things like to meet people, or he wants to try and achieve play-in with 10 sims. Or even here, he wants to talk to Dina, who you might remember from the video. He also has fears, things that he's afraid of. Things like being rejected or getting fat. As a player, you decide whether you're going to fulfill the, the Sims' wants or realize their fears. And as you do, it fills up this bar here, which is the aspiration bar. Success in filling up this bar actually unlocks rewards and special behaviors, with the ultimate goal being to increase the lifespan of the Sim by having aspirational success. It's also really important to point out that as you play your sim, you actually influence what wants and fears show up. So it's not just their aspiration, it's also the choices you've made as a player. Now I'm going to pop over to Sarah, and what's also important, as I said, you're playing the sims through a lifetime. Genetics, genes, passing traits from one generation to the next is also a big part of the gameplay. I don't know if you can notice a little family resemblance here between Alex and Sarah, um, but I think the red hair kind of gives it away. Now I'm going to pop over and show you the rest of the party guests. Can you pick out the rest of Sarah's family? If you can't, you can always open up the family tree and actually see the entire Sims family. This gives you a sense of their genealogy, their lineage. And each Sim has their own family tree. Like if I click on Alex, you're going to see the tree from a completely different perspective. You now see his parents and his grandparents. Well, now I'm going to get the action started. I'm going to pop over to Sarah. Now, I told you about Don being a romance sim. Well, Sarah is a family sim. Her aspiration is really very different. She wants things like she wants to see her sister get married. She wants to have another baby. She'd like to hug Alex. She also has a terrible fear, which is of being cheated on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have her hug Alex because it's a really easy want for me to, to fulfill. And as she hugs him, you're going to see a couple things happen you're going to see that the bar, the aspiration bar, is shot up a little bit. But also, you're going to see that the want has changed, which is she'd like to see Alex grow up. I've just sent her over to the birthday cake, and 
this is going to be Alex's party. Now, the parents actually have to raise the children. So here I'm showing you Alex's aspiration, which is to grow up. All kids have that aspiration. He's done really well, so he's ready to grow up. So and by giving him this birthday, we're fulfilling not only Sarah's want, but Alex's as well. Sims love birthday parties. Growing up is a big deal for the Sims. Now this is a big life moment for Alex, and the player is rewarded and told, hey, this is something to really pay attention to. Alex's want panel has changed as he's grown up. And that happens at each age transition. But I've done something for Sarah, and I've done something for Alex, and now I'm going to pop over and actually do something for Don. Now I said earlier that Don wanted to talk to Dina. I'm going to send him over and have him do that. seem to be hitting it off. They like the same things. Not sure he might be asking her on vacation. Now he's fulfilled that want and now it changes and he actually wants to flirt with Dina. I'm gonna go ahead and have him do that. It's really a player choice. Uh, there's some danger in it but this is the way that I'm playing Don. I'm playing him to his aspiration. You can see a little swagger in his step. Well, that's because he's doing well in his aspirations. So he's actually unlocked the sexy walk. So he thinks he's feeling good about himself. Well, now he wants a kiss. So I've sent him over to sit down, and I'm going to have Dina come and sit down with him. Have them cuddle. And now for the big moment. Fortunately, they have a little privacy here. This would be rather awkward out in public. Uh-oh. Oh, this is not good. So Virginia's just busted in on them. Don obviously is oblivious, but she actually, because the Sims are smarter in Sims 2, she's aware of what's happened, and... Oh, no. And she's a good sister, so she's telling her sister what she just saw. Oh, man. So Sarah's now devastated. I'm going to see if I can fix this situation. I'm going to send Don out to apologize to her. Forgive me. I've been a fool. Oh, good. That worked. Oh, Dina. Oh, Dina has just ruined everything. Sarah's just had one of her absolute worst fears realized, which is being cheated on. So she's now a basket case, and I've lost complete control of her. Virginia has just attacked Dina. At least she's a good sister. But that's the reality of Sims 2, is chaos can erupt at any moment. And this is just one tiny slice of an enormous game that would take me days to show you. But hopefully you get an idea of the kind of stuff that's going to happen in Sims 2, and you're going to be psyched to play it when it comes out September 17th. On The Sims, you know, we went, it was a very long process for that game, um, and it was very hard to sell you know, initially, a lot of people didn't think again about taking out the trash and cleaning the toilet would be very fun. Uh, and so I kind of took the project underground, and we had a lot of different names for the project over the years. You know, it went, when I, when I first took it underground and made it kind of a black box project, it was Project X for about a year. Um, then it, well, actually, before that, it was Dollhouse, which uh, I originally, when I first saw it of The Sims, I called it Dollhouse. Uh, and I found that that term didn't um, go over very well with teenage boys. Uh, not well at all, actually. So I stopped calling it that. I, you know, I swore never to call it Dollhouse again. Uh, and then it went to Project X for many years. Uh, then it went to Jefferson, which was kind of a code name. Um, 
and it was based upon Thomas Jefferson's, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which was kind of the goal of the game. Uh, and, you know, then eventually it kind of reemerged, you know, and became The Sims and became kind of in a full production project and everybody knew about it. But for many years it was kind of hidden underneath the storm drains. When you play The Sims or Sim City um, or any of these Sim games, you know, you can't help but then go out and have a different perception of the environment around you. It makes you reflect on the internal balances you're making in your own life between, like, you know, work and leisure friends and family. I know a lot of uh, women have written me and said that they put their boyfriends in the game along with them and they see what happens and they tell their boyfriend, you know, what happened in the game. And I don't think they, they expect that the game is simulating what will happen, but they're more curious to see what their boyfriend's reaction is going to be when they tell them what happened, you know, when he was floating with the next door neighbor. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, you kiss him. Why you so sad? There, you could show the strain a little bit when you put them down nice again. Oh, oh, you think so? Oh, you kill us. Oh, oh. Let's leave a little space to let this run through just here. So you're happy, everything's great. Oh, happy, happy, little heavy put down now. Space. Ah. So give her just a head nod space. You go again. Perfect, we're moving on to reject, and this is really fun. Well, some people think it's risky that in Sims 2 we decided to go to uh, black and white and stick figures, but we thought it just gives um, um, the player more room for imagination, and we kind of hope that some people will get crayons and start drawing on the, the TV screen. <laughs> The first thing you'll notice playing The Sims 2 is that the visual quality is just so much better than it was in Sims 1. The environment is a full 3D world. Uh, we've got foundations and decks now, which means that instead of having this really interesting topology and then having to make a flat space to build on, you can just, you know, drag stuff out and, and, and build it. You can make that Hollywood house on the hill, you can make a, you know, the house in the canyon. You can do much more interesting structures. You're not limited to the same two floors. Uh, you can do much more, you know, hillside developments. Fences and real roofs and diagonal doors and windows, which sound mundane, but it's a huge new thing. And all of a sudden, the, the world seems dramatically more colorful, more rich. It makes it a much more compelling experience because you just feel so connected to what's on the screen and it feels so real. Mokey hokey. To me, the most exciting part of The Sims 2 is how much we're putting into The Sims themselves. One of the new features of Sims 2 is this very dynamic create-a-sim where you're actually going in and choosing the genetic attributes of your sim. You can get in very close to the people and they have much more detailed, smooth, animations, you know, which means we're able to convey um, much more subtle aspects of their personality and mood through their animation and their face. You know, with skin that looks touchable and um, uh, gestures that have nuance. The fact that they now have facial expressions, the fact that you can accessorize them, you can put makeup on them, all of that just goes to your ability to create characters that you believe in and can connect with. With sexy looking sims like this, you know you want to get up close and personal. From very early on with the 3D world and the ability to bring the cameras in, um, I've always sort of felt like a voyeur as I was playing the game anyway. I mean, there's some screenshots I've taken with the hot tub and on the deck at night. I was like, I'm not sure I should be watching this. Well, now we brought the camera in even closer and we almost got a first person 
perspective. So you can come in really close and, and really become intimate with your sims and what's going on in those settings. And we think that, that, that um, when we provide a camera tool for you to actually capture footage, that this is going to become one of the really, really compelling elements to The Sims 2 for, for a certain group. Maybe not for everybody, but for a certain group like me, I can already st- I'm already starting to plan out the, the movies that I'm going to make within The Sims 2. And, you know, it, The Sims has always been like you've got your cast of characters and you build out your sets. Um, once we've got people creating custom content and, and you can really create varied environments, um, you're going to be able to create pretty compelling movies if you've got some basic movie editing skills. I started The Sims in 93. You know, I started it a long, long time ago and worked on it kind of in the background for many years. Um, but two years previous, in 1991, our home burned down in the Oakland Hills fire. And we lost everything. You know, I got out with a few pictures and that was it. Um, so from square one, we had to kind of build our lives back up. We had to go, you know, kind of buy a house, then buy furniture, buy clothes, buy all the, you know, buy a new car, all the stuff that had burned up in the fire. And it was interesting just kind of looking at the order in which, you know, we acquired things. You know, step one, new underwear, toothbrush, you know, <laughs> step two, you know, maybe some new pants and shirts, you know. And then, you know, step three, you know, we're in a hotel room and, and kind of building your life back up, you know, and getting a sense of the materialistic basis, you know, and which things are really important in a minute-to-minute basis. At the same time, you know, we got out of the fire safely and my daughter was elsewhere and she was safe. And we realized how meaningless these material things were relative to our safety. And so that was just, you know, very interesting, that whole process that happened, you know, a couple of years before I started thinking about doing The Sims. It's been more entertaining for me to watch what the fans have done with The Sims than it was to actually make the game, you know. And usually it's like you spend all this time making something that will entertain other people. But in this case, you know, I spent this time and, you know, our team spent this time making the game. And then all the people that played it entertained us with all the cool stuff that they made for it. It was important for us to involve the users into that experience because we know that if people start to connect and participate into the creation of the game and the content of the game, they're going to be dramatically interested in it and they're going to be able to viscerally be better connected with the game. It's a great opportunity for our custom content. Players, you know, the people who really live to make content for other people. We love those people. Those people, we, those people are really, really important to us. And we, we're working very hard in The Sims 2 to make much more powerful ways for those people to get involved. Over the course of a Sims lifetime in The Sims 2, you're going to have them go through these life events. Um, they range anything from their first birthday to their first job to their first crush or their first kiss. Musa tigi tigi. <laughs> The player is going to be taking the Sims through different strategic challenges at each of those stages, um, kind of those rites of passage that we associate with growing up. And how you decide to play that as a player, how you, you know, take those first steps into a teenage relationship and, and that first crush and when you might try to flirt with that you know, special someone, um, is how the player actually impacts the life of their sim. You want good food and you hate eating bad food. The people themselves have a lot more awareness, you know, of what's going on around them. You know, when somebody comes in the room, you know, you'll see them turn their head. They might smile if it's a friend. Um, They notice if these people over here are arguing. So that really uh, brings up their believability several notches. You're going to know when someone's a slob you're going to know when somebody is really nice. You're going to know when somebody is really active. You're going to see that on the screen and the way that the Sims behave. There are omelets, there's breakfast cereal, there's soup, there's turkey. Another sim who has gotten into a bit of hygiene failure and is getting a bit smelly, they're going to walk by and just, whoo, that's not good. Uh Uh-huh. They got body types. You know, you can feed them up and get them fat. You can put them on the workout bench and get them them buff and trim. 
the way it happens is, you know, the sim will work out and work out and work out, and he'll reach that moment, and then he'll get up and and bing, and he'll be buff, which is sort of how we all wish it works. There's hamburgers, there's hot dogs. I think a key element of The Sims is things burn up. And in The Sims 2, we've got, you know, lots of things that burn up and lots of way, new ways to start the fire and more intelligent response to the fire. Uh, family behavior in the face of fire, which I think is important. Um, but more importantly, you know, it's, a, it's an effect. Uh, in Sims 1, it was a sprite. It was a piece of art, you know, and we'd have a couple of frames of it and, you know, do this thing. It was very symbolic. And in Sims 2, we've, we've got a much better fire. Well, fire was one of our traditional disasters, you know, SimCity, you know, no matter what the disaster was, it always ended up kind of resolving the fire. You know, if there's an earthquake, it started a lot of fires. I don't do specifically flambe. Uh, I do um, basically, I burn off the alcohol in sauces. And I guess technically that is a flambe. I don't, I don't, I don't do a lot of decorative flambe. In the game industry, it can be, you know, extremely high pressure. Um... And to survive in the game industry, you really have to learn how to pace yourself and how to, you know, look back and get a bigger picture on what's really important. For me, this place is sort of the, a, a big idea kitchen. One of the things that really unites us is we all really do have a passion for making games. It's, it's something that is, is part of us, and it's something that ties us together. I love this job, but I love cooking a little more. Essentially, time passes in Sims 2, which it didn't really in Sims 1. And so there are days of the week and weekends, and so the player is going to have this sense of the clock ticking, but it's actually progressing. And the Sims each have a period of um, time that they're in each stage of life. They have genetic code. They actually can have babies, and they're going to share those genetic traits over generations. So. As you develop a relationship between two sims and they have a child, you're going to see characteristics passed along through the children. Think more, Bubba's ya! You might have your kids grow up together, going to school together, become now teenagers, and then they, you know, become married and have their own family. What that means is that if you have a lot of kids, they're actually all going to be different and all portraying you know, their own variation of what the mom and the dad were. They know who their parents are, so you're going to see the toddler following its mom and dad around the house. And when grandma and grandpa, who might live next door, come to visit, the kids are going to know it's grandma and grandpa and respond. So, you know, run up and give them a hug. And we actually have something called grandma hug, which won't be called that in the game, but the idea is, is it's the kind of hug that a grandma gives her grandchildren. And so players are going to get that sense that the Sims know who their family is and can respond and react to them appropriately. And so there's a family and a sense of connectivity between all those people and responsibilities between the adults and the kids and also conflict because as anybody who has you know, teenagers at home or even kids understand that there are always a little challenge in running and, and participating in such an environment. Uh, I'm strongly in favor of nature versus nurture. The wealth and variety of um, sims that you can create in this experience is just vast. Ta-da! Well, and Max is has kind, of, have kind of a dark sense of humor. And uh, so the sims, you know, you can't really enjoy um, succeeding with a sim or making a lot of friends or getting a good career or having this wonderful um, life if you can't also uh, tempt them with... Uh, um, failures and disasters. The game itself, so failure is as fun as success. I mean, this this is a game of exploration. It's a world to explore. Um, the reason you appreciate the success states is because of the failure states. And so, you know, we've made sure in Sims 2 there's a lot of new territory to explore in terms of how how the Sims ultimately fail. And each of the age ranges has, you know, has a strategic 
challenge that it presents. There's always these humorous um, events coming up that are unexpected, and, and some of them are planned, but most of the, the funniest stuff just happens, and you're just like, I can't imagine how that happened. We don't plan for everything. We don't. I mean, so much of the magic of this game is that we have this open world, this sandbox, and there's AI that controls the way that the Sims interact with their world, but we don't, we don't capture every instance. One of the best examples of just something completely unexpected and totally hilarious that, that I've seen in the game just recently is um, the female Sims get pregnant, the women get pregnant and have kids, and they actually go into labor. Um, and it just so happened I was playing, the mom was pregnant, she had a labor pain, the dad came running out to see what was wrong, except the dad was in the shower at the point that he came running out. So he comes running out, and he's totally nude, and I'm like, where's his clothes? And then I realized he had been in the shower, and I laughed out loud. I must have laughed for five minutes because I just couldn't believe how funny it was. And, of course, I stopped the action, got a great screenshot of him kind of mid-stride, pixelated, running to her side. Um, and it's stuff like that that just makes you go, whoa. This is amazing when you see stuff like that happen. You know, this guy looked like he was uh, having some teenage, uncontrollable, um, solo lust moment, you know, in the middle of the kitchen. Mm-hmm. 
Sims 2 is really beyond words. Asparagus. Head cheese. Exigency. It's mind blowing. Du kommer inte kunna sluta spela. A killer game. 100 times cooler. I'm from Sweden. Absolutely amazing. The Sims 2 is gonna blow any game out of the water. Mule scanner. The skins and the, the model capabilities, the uh, the morphing of faces. You can zoom all the way in and you know be right up against the Sims face. It's so much more open-ended. There's so many different kind of ways that people can play the game. Armadillo. The interactions with the Sims, it's almost lifelike. Their relationships, their DNA, everything is so customizable. Rosebud. They can now do a lot more things in, in the bedroom and the shower. I hope to push that to its fullest extent. It's going to be a new era in the Sims, in my opinion, because it's more like creating a movie now. Plumbob. If I would to make a home movie with the equipment in the game, I would probably do something romantic. It's very addicting. There's always, I would say, very something very different every time you play. I think you're going to need retirement homes in real life for people playing Sims too much. I would be more than willing to pay $200 just to get my hand on a pre-release copy right now. I'd probably pay, you know, at least a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, excuse me. Hello. So if you could give me a copy right now, I possibly would f*** you. <laughs> I think it's going to be um, even more successful than the first game. Well, it's going to be the biggest game of the year, naturally. The world will never be the same. Well, it's the Sims. It's better than chicken. Better than pizza. Bulldozer. Game of the year. I may go without sleep. Firehouse. Firehouse. I work on the database. I oversee all the testing. Come in early in the mornings. I'm a general tester. A core tester. I am a QA tester. I'm the lead for the sandbox team on Sims 2. Which means I go through the game. Pretty much a utility guy. I just play the game. There definitely is a connection to the Sims that you create. I mean, especially if you sit there and will actually play them for an hour or two. There's just a bunch of interesting little things that, that happen. The most dated behavior I've seen is when the toddlers uh, play in the toilet. One of my sims kicked my lawn gnome. He's just walking by and just sees a gnome, just walks over and just kicks it over. It was, it was kind of funny. For the first time, like, say, a, a family member of a sim dies. I just recently uh, uh, burned a couple sims to death in a, in a fire. <laughs> the Grim Reaper shows up. That was upsetting. You're like, bust out his cell phone, like saying like, yeah, yeah, I got another sim. It definitely uh, uh, it got me the first time I saw it. It was just hilarious. It was a first kiss, and it was a teenage girl. So I got to enjoy kind of manipulating the, <laughs> the relationship that my girlfriend and I actually have. <laughs> first kiss is this magical moment, but if you don't do it right, he turns her down, and, <laughs> and the, the, her shoulders drop, you know, and you just, you just feel like, oh... Sims 2 is pretty much the epitome of open-ended gameplay. The graphics are, are fantastic. If you want to create something totally original with this game, you can. Gameplay is so smooth. The replayability is just giant. Just in the game, just make things look pretty much however you want, set up your house however you want. It's not just, you know, the average game where you run around and you're shooting people. It's pretty great. I think that if you don't play it, you're missing out and, well, we'll see you later. <laughs> Um, this guy goes into a restaurant and sits down, and, uh, and actually it's more of a cafe, so he goes in this cafe, and he sits, and the waiter, no, the waitress comes up, and she says, um, what do you have? And he says, I'll have a cup of coffee and a donut. And she says, uh, sorry, we don't have any donuts. And so he looks at the menu a little bit more, and he says, oh, okay, well, in that case, bring me a glass of milk and a donut. 
And she says, no, look, I just told you, we don't have any donuts. Don't you understand? And he said, oh, no donuts, I see, okay. So he looks at the menu a little bit more, and he says, well, in that case, just bring a nice Tina donut. And then at this point, she gets, you know, really upset. I, look, I told you, we do not have any donuts. What's wrong with you? Can't you hear me? You know, are you crazy? I said, oh, no donuts. No donuts. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, in that case, just bring me a donut. First of all, I want to thank all the fans out there that have spent time playing the sounds, and especially those that have created custom content or websites for the game, because I think that the creativity that you invest in this game is by far and away the largest component or reason for success. And I think internally at Maxis here, we're thinking more and more that we're not so much building games you know, to sell, but we're trying to build communities. The games become the kind of the nucleus around which the community forms, but really the business we want to be in is the business of building these creative communities of people that can create interesting, cool content and then share that amongst each other. You know, in that sense, I view our games kind of more almost as a hobby and less of kind of a dramatic experience like a movie because the story that you're experiencing in a game like The Sims really is the story that you put into it, the story that you tell, not the story that we are telling you. And so it's very interesting to us, you know, what we can do to help you be more creative, to increase the creative potential of what you can do telling a story in these games. And, you know, we get a lot of feedback from you, the fans, through websites, you know, from our message boards, and even from our Sims Exchange, you know, seeing the stories that you tell. And um, we're continually looking for ways to where we can kind of give you more creative freedom. And so whenever we see that exhibited, when we see the cool creative stuff that you make or use the games for, um, that's what's really motivating us to make these things.